Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage. Significant severe storms are likely today with damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes, and expanding heat with the hottest temperatures of the year for many areas will be felt as we go into later next week. And the Atlantic hurricane season is awakening with something possibly to watch into next week. We'll go into those details later on in today's video. But first, looking here at the the El Nino conditions across the Central Pacific. The El Nino continues to intensify with rapid warming of the waters out here just to the west of South America and the Central Americas. This is near the equator and that's where we look for El Nino and La Nina conditions. And with warmer than normal temperatures out here in the waters, that does signal an El Nino. Remember, a La Nina is with cooler water temperatures. So looking here at the chart, what you see is a bunch of numbers here and a bunch of data points. What this means is the positive values are El Nino, especially if you get plus 0 0.5. And then once you get to 0, 0.0, that is Enso neutral conditions. And then negative is more La Nina, especially with negative 0 0.5 or stronger. So right now we are currently currently sitting into an El Nino and we really have been for the past couple of months going all the way really back to early June or even late May so we continue to see strengthening El Nino conditions and what this means for our weather pattern well currently we still have flood watches out for portions of the lower Ohio Valley down in here toward the Cumberland Plateau into Tennessee and even some flash flood warnings where we had some significant flash flooding over the past couple of days. And just look at the past 24 hours of rainfall across this region. We've seen several inches of accumulation for rainfall into southern Illinois, western Kentucky. I know the Mayfield, Kentucky region was ravaged by floodwaters as of yesterday. So definitely seeing some unfortunate news coming out of Kentucky and even southern Illinois from yesterday. So hopefully things can get back to normal here but as we go through today, the cold front will continue to drop south. So if anything, western Kentucky and southern Illinois should get a chance to dry out every single hour of the day today that goes by the chances will be dwindling for precipitation there so that's some good news but we do have the chance for some severe weather we have an enhanced risk of severe storms across two zones today one of these is up here across the portions of the southern great lakes from detroit getting down through toledo here into portions of northern ohio into northwest pennsylvania including the erie pennsylvania region and then we have an enhanced risk back here across the southern plains from the front range of eastern Colorado down into southwestern Kansas and the Oklahoma panhandle here. This could be for some significant damaging winds of hurricane force. Also, we could be seeing some two inch or larger hail and diameter and possibly a few isolated tornadoes and some severe weather could also be sneaking down through Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Georgia, northern Alabama, and especially into South Carolina as we go through the day today. And looking at this afternoon, you can see a couple of areas we're watching for initiation. The first is across the Four, cor uh, the four Corners region into eastern Colorado, right off the Front Range. We have a lot of lift out here. Isolated supercells and a broken line could be developing with big hail, big wind, and tornadoes later on this afternoon afternoon. We're also watching a broken line around the cold front here across portions of eastern Michigan, down through Ohio into Indiana, down into western Kentucky. We could be seeing some broken line of supercells with more damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes. And then a couple storms trying to divvy up across portions of eastern Tennessee as well. Those will push into the Carolinas and North Georgia this afternoon. Those areas will have to watch for severe weather. Then as we go into tonight, we're watching a couple more areas. An ongoing threat for severe weather across the southeast and the mid-Atlantic, but a big complex of storms tries to de uh, develop across portions of Kansas, down into the Oklahoma panhandle and dropping east-southeastward with significant wind damage, very large hail, and tornadoes potentially, especially if we have storms developing out ahead of the main complex. So this will be the area of interest as we go into this evening and into the overnight hours for severe weather. 
And then as we go into Friday, tomorrow, the cold front will continue to drop to the south. So more good news for western Kentucky. Southern Illinois will be drying out even further. High pressure will be working in. So definitely seeing more sunshine, more dry conditions overall across the Midwest into the Ohio Valley on Friday. And that will drop the severe weather a little bit further south and lessen it as well. More of a marginal risk here across portions of the desert southwest up across the western high plains. We have another marginal risk across the Delmarva up here as well into the Mid-Atlantic and across the Gulf Coast states from portions of the Little Rock area down through Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, and the Macon, Georgia region as we go through Friday. And then as we go into Saturday, that drops a little further to the south. The cold front kind of stalls down here, so we have more of a marginal threat for severe weather from Shreveport, east through Jackson, Mississippi, the Montgomery, Alabama region, down through Macon, Georgia, and even the Savannah, Georgia region. And we could also have a few rumblers over there into Myrtle Beach, South Carolina as well. So just some areas that can Concern going forward through Friday into Saturday for severe weather. We definitely will be keeping an eye on that. But overall, the total rainfall accumulation now through Sunday. Expect some decent rains, especially with that complex back here into eastern Colorado, southwestern and western Kansas, down into northern Oklahoma. We could be seeing several inches of rain, and we've had a lot of flooding events, so we have to continue to watch this. Even though we have the threat for severe weather, we have another threat for severe weather in the form of flooding potentially across these areas, so we'll be watching that. More enhancement to the rainfall across the southeast with a couple more storm complexes moving through and across the northeast as well up across the Delmarva there into New York State, Vermont, and portions of New Hampshire, we could be seeing some decent rains going through this weekend as well. Looking at the overall weather pattern this weekend, beyond that cold front as it drops to the south, this will give us a reprieve with some of the heat as we go across the eastern two-thirds, but it is a different story all the way across the west where it is going to be heating up in a big way, not only for California, the Four Corners region, or Nevada, but even farther north into the Pacific Northwest and perhaps even southwestern Canada, uh, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan. We could be getting in on the heat this weekend. And looking at the temperatures for the United States, yeah, look at the heat, guys. It's 116 in Phoenix, 120. 20 plus in Death Valley. We have 100 degree heat all the way up into Washington State, Oregon, and Idaho today. And then as we go into Saturday, that cold front will give us a reprieve across the eastern two thirds of the country with the heat dropping further south. So the Dallas Fort Worth area, I hate to say it, but it will be cooler into the middle 90s on Saturday, 96 there. 94 into Wichita Falls, and then 113 as we go into portions of the Phoenix region on Saturday. And then early next week, we will start to see the heat tr try to transition west to east across the United States with the center of the ridge of high pressure across the Four Corners region. And then late next week, that just all expands across the United States, especially over here into the Great Lakes region and portions of the Mid-Atlantic as well. And the jet stream moves further north as we go in towards next week. So the active storm track will live further north across portions of the Canadian provinces into southeastern Canada and maybe the upper Great Lakes region as we go into next week. So it will be hard pressed to see any precipitation for the most part across the Great Plains states unless you live in the Dakotas or back up into Minnesota there. But you can see the active storm track will be shifting north into Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario with maybe some storm chances later next week and the next weekend for portions of the Great Lakes lakes on the northeastern periphery of that ridge. And looking at the temperature trends early next week, yeah, the heat will be building. 100 degree heat all the way up to the international border early next week, but that just takes off even further. Later next week, we're up to 100 up here into the Omaha region. Closing in on 100 in Des Moines and even the Twin Cities region. So the heat will be building further north as we go through later next week. And the Climate Prediction Center is bullish on this with well above average temperatures taking us into the first couple of days of August as well through August 2nd. So we'll be able to watch out for that with most of the United States above average at that point. And the precipitation outlook underneath that ridge. We're not expecting much rainfall as well as up across the Pacific Northwest, but the monsoon 
seasonal season does try to get underway as we get through the last few days of July and into early August. And up and over top of that ridge with the storm track, we have to watch out for more significant severe weather. This is a favorable derecho environment. The airflow around that high pressure ridge is clockwise, and we have to watch out where that cape, that convective available potential energy sets up, and the orientation of the jet stream, where those collide we could be seeing some bigger storms once that ridge tries to break down as we get into early August. Transitioning over to the tropical weather update, we have a 60% chance likely area of development across the eastern Pacific Ocean. This is really running out of time today. This is a 1,009 millibar low, and as we go into tomorrow, it really falls apart because of that you know, cooler water across the eastern Pacific here. It's really running out of time, and you can see this is in degrees Celsius. But overall, it's going to be moving into temperatures that are below 26 degrees Celsius. You want 26 degrees Celsius or higher because that's 80 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. That's what tropical entities like. And we see that dropping off into those cooler waters in the eastern Pacific next week. But across the North Atlantic, we are continuing to watch Tropical Storm Don. It continues to remain away from land for the most part across the North Atlantic. This will continue to remain at Tropical Storm status through this weekend. And then dropping back to Tropical Depression status by early next week and kind of skirting just to the east of the eastern Canadian provinces here. But then underneath that, we have a 20% chance of development. A more robust tropical wave is moving off of Africa, and this has its site set on on the MDR region, the main development region, and perhaps the Eastern Caribbean as we go into the better half of next week. So you can see that tropical wave trying to develop here, and then we have another tropical wave right behind that as well. So this could start a chain of reaction of some tropical weather moving into early August for the North Atlantic. So this is the EPS ensemble members. This is where it clusters up some of the low pressure tracks with this as we go into this weekend. You can see that tropical wave down here well to the east of the Lesser Antilles. But by the time we get into later next week, especially Wednesday onward, this pushes it across portions of the Lesser Antilles and toward Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic in the eastern and central Caribbean. And this will be something to watch with the warmer waters out here, 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. That's 80 to mid 80s for the sea surface temperatures in Fahrenheit across this region. So we need to keep an eye on this, especially if the wind shear is favorable. I do think we have a brief window where the wind shear is actually low enough for development in the Eastern Caribbean. So we'll continue to watch that as well. Well, if you like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. It is absolutely free to do, and I appreciate all the new subscribers out there. Don't forget to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. It helps out more than you know. And if you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, hit the description down below the video. The link to Twitter is on there. It's at HWeather420. I do post on that platform very frequently throughout the week as well. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Go check out my new YouTube channel I just started up. I will be posting videos on that throughout the next Next couple of days and that will be mainly for the north central united states so if you live in the north central united states go check out that youtube channel the description for that will be down below as well and you guys can get more weather information about the midwest the northern and central plains and great lakes region and stuff like that moving forward as well leave any comments questions and concerns below i'll get to those later on today and i hope everybody has a great rest of their thursday out there